you're watching a video by Tick. Who the hell do you think he is? Okay, how am I meant to deal with Emra here? I know. Let's go out. Let's go ask the other doc. Stack, Marty, have you found my younger self yet? Well, I met your younger self. Great. And I gotta say, you're kind of uptight. What? You won't even talk to me. I find that hard to believe. Tell me what happened. I tried asking him about your rocket drill, but he says he's not a scientist. What? What? Oh, father. What's he got to do with this? In 1931, I was still deathly afraid of my father discovering the truth about my scientific predilections. So I carefully kept them under wraps, practicing science at odd hours, away from his prying eyes. That sucks. It sucked a lot. Fortunately, I eventually stood up to him. But right now, my younger self probably thinks he's been sent by my father to check up on me. What do I do to convince Teen Doc that I'm not a spy? I'm not sure. You know, your younger self seems really dedicated to the law. It's a facade, I assure you. I had to keep up appearances to appease my father. Hmm. Why does your younger self mutter all the time? Muttering? Why would I be muttering? I, I, I never mutter unless... Uh... The Hill Valley Expo! The Expo? Yes, the Expo. How could I have forgotten? In a few months, the younger me will put on a demonstration at the Hill Valley Exposition, my first public foray into the world of science. Everyone in town will be there, including a number of noted inventors who shaped my career. So, it was a big success? No, it was a miserable failure, but it was a spectacularly miserable failure, one which marked my transition from an amateur garage scientist into a professional seeker of truth. What does this expo have to do with you muttering all the time? When I was younger, I used to relieve stress by working on complex mathematical conundrums. No doubt my younger self was working on some impossible problem in an attempt to work off cerebral steam in the weeks before the exposition. What was I muttering about? I don't know. Uh, H to the something with an inverse of something else. I I'm not so good at equations. That's too bad. I bet if we could solve my younger self's problem, he'd be more inclined to listen to you. Okay. Let's talk about your younger self's problems later. Okay, but don't forget we're on a bit of a deadline here. Okay, so find the younger self, ask him about the equation. Okay. I think I've got this. D Fine, I'll just wait here. I'm watching you. Will you just give me a chance? Harassment's <laughs> a box. federal crime, Mr. Crockett. Sounds like you're a little scared of your father. Scared of my father? Hop is the most learned, just, incorruptible judge that Hill Valley has ever seen. The only people scared of Judge Brown are people with a dark secret to hide. And I don't have a dark secret to hide. Damn it. Uh, about don't your... Don't say it. Hmm. Bye, buddy. Inverted. Will you just give me a chance? Harassment's a federal yes, crime, I know. Mr. Crockett. I know. Sounds like you're a little scared of Oops. your father. Scared. Hit it. Hit it. Damn it. Whoops. Damn it. Uh, about Don't your. Don't say it. Yeah. Oh, wait, is that even possible? Mm, now, if H stands for one, the one-dimensional harmonic constant, later then naturally H two A multiplied by the inversion of H has to come out less than expectation value of A, right? On the... What am I missing here? Come on, moderate. Okay. Eh. Okay, let's see if Doc is even so. Uh, 
Point and click adventures hurt my brain. Whoop. Wait, what? No. There we go. Okay. Stack. Marty, how goes the escape plan? I'm still not making any headway with your younger self, Doc. Really? I still can't figure out what your younger self is muttering about. Last. If only I could hear him myself. Yeah. Let's talk about your younger self's problems later. Okay, but don't forget we're on a bit of a deadline here. Okay. Hmm. Uh, okay, so. Or do we take H to stand for the Hermitian line operator? But in that case, H to the A multiplied by the inverse of A minus B. I just gotta figure out how to. Oh, wait, I got it. I, I think I got it. I signed. Hey, how you doing, Einie? Now if H stands for. Oh, not. I know, bump into it. Will you just give me a chance? What? Harassment's a federal crime, Mr. Crockett. Eh. Okay, I get it. Okay. Think, think, think. Hmm. I don't need to go in there anymore. Now I've hate. Will you just give me a chance? What the damn it? Harassment's a federal crime, Mr. Crockett. Okay, this is getting annoying. Damn it. Oh. Okay, we got it. Ba, 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 ba. What am I missing here? Or do we take H to stand with I'm not so sure I want to stay in a place that welcomes transients. <laughs> okay. Okay, let me think here. I guess this is where the speakeasy burned down. How would Doc ever get mixed up in that? I better not. Those lawyers sound kind of nasty. Will you just give me oh, a damn chance? It. Harassment's a fa Sounds scared. Yeah, 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 we've heard it. Okay, fine. There's no way to just say. Yeah, okay, let me think here. Uh. Um, let's go back to dark. Psst, dark. Guess who I bumped into at the soup kitchen? My grandfather. No. Oh. Don't worry, I didn't talk to him or change his future or anything. Good. I wish I could though. This era's tannin is treating him like dirt. Don't worry. If history plays out as it's supposed to, he'll soon be out from under Kitan's thumb and free to live out his life as a humble accountant with your grandma. What was her name again? Sylvia. Right, Sylvia. I know this really isn't the right time or place, but I found your notebook. Ah, so that's where I left it. Why'd you bring it here? Because the bank's selling off all your stuff. They can't do that. That's what I keep trying to tell them. Well, you hold on to it for safekeeping. We'll deal with my financial situation in 1986, after we saved me from a grisly death in 1931. I'm still not making any headway with your younger self, Doc. Really? What do I do to convince Teen Doc that I'm not a spy? I'm not sure. Maybe if we solve that problem he's working on, he'll be more inclined to trust you. I still can't figure out what your younger self is muttering about. Last, if only I could hear him myself. Wait, I got it, 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 I got it. Let's talk about your younger self's problems later. Okay, but don't forget we're on a bit of a deadline here. I got it, I got it, I got it. It's just hit me, I've got that tape recorder. Okay. Don't think 
Emmett, think. H to the A multiplied by the inverse of A. H to the A multiplied by the inverse of A. I, oh, oh. The inverse of A might not be equal to A's expectation value. Okay. Shows that I'm not living in the 80s and 90s anymore since I forgot that tape recorders can record. So, Doc, does this ring a bell? Oh, think, Emmett, think. H to the A multiplied by the inverse of A. H to the A multiplied by the inverse of A. Good grief! Is that me? I sound so young. I was gonna say intense. I forgot how wound up I used to get. Yeah, but what are you muttering about? Oh, that's easy. It's Ivanov's conundrum. Just tell my younger self that H equals the Hamiltonian operator. Won't giving him the answer mess up the time stream? Only if it turns out that reality is actually nothing more than a holographic illusion created by the interplay of subatomic particles on a vast two-dimensional membrane. So... It'll be fine. <laughs> okay. Christ, we spent like what? A good 20, 30 minutes? Emmer, 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 Emmer. Will you just give me a chance? Harassment's a federal crime, Mr. Crockett. Maybe H equals the Hamiltonian operator. What did you just say? I said maybe H equals the Hamiltonian operator. Yeah. Great Scott! If H is a Hamiltonian, then H to the A multiplied by the inverse of H can only be the same as the expectation value for A! <laughs> That's it! That's the solution to Ivanov's conundrum, the problem I've been wrestling with in my head all week! I'm sure you would have figured it out by yourself in a day or two. The way you figured out how to build that rocket power drill. Where did you learn so much about science? Well, it's like this. You know about my rocket power drill. Then there can only be one explanation. What? You're from the patent office. I confess I didn't quite know what to expect when I sent the paperwork, but I never expected this. Welcome. I'm at your service. What can I do for you? Can I see your rocket power drill? Of course, of course. Naturally, it's just a scale model, but it's nearly operational. I can show it to you, say, first thing in the morning. Ah, that's no good. I need to see a full-size model. <gasps> that's fully operational. <gasps> Tonight. <gasps> Otherwise, we'll have to award the patent to a competing inventor, uh, Dr. McCoy. It can't be done! I mean, it might be possible to construct a full-size working model in that time frame, but I haven't got the main ingredient for the fuel. I'll get it for you. What is it? 190 proof grain alcohol. And you know how difficult it is to get a hold of alcohol these days. Especially now that someone's blown up the speakeasy. And besides, there's no way I can get off work until I've delivered the subpoena. Part of the investigation into the business affairs of Kid Tannen. Is it vitally important you see that rocket power drill today? Yes. Is it vitally important you deliver that subpoena today? Yes! Listen, I'll help you deliver it, and I'll see to what you get the alcohol you need. <laughs> It'll help you get that drill finished by tonight. Deal? Deal. Here's the subpoena. I've got a subpoena my grandpa. <gasps> It's Kid Tannen. Hey, I, I just saw him at the soup kitchen yelling at Arthur McFly. I'm not surprised. Arthur does the books for his business. What kind of business? That's what the DA is trying to find out. Let's go talk to him. No! Why not? Kid Tannen can tell us where Arthur's hiding. Yeah, well, he can also have us fitted for a Chicago overcoat. Okay. This one's that hey, uh, Miss Strickland. Oh, hello, Mr. Crockett. Try not to draw any undue attention my way. I'm on the trail of a hot new scoop, as we in the newspaper business say. I'm sorry about the way Einstein lit into you back there. I don't know what got into him. Well, I hope you've learned to keep him under control. Yeah, I found someone to keep him distracted. Very good. Now let's see if you know your multiplication tables. What's the scoop? 
I've heard rumors that something shady is going on at the Sisters of Mercy soup kitchen. It's under new management, you know. And, oh, you mustn't jump to any conclusions. Not till the facts are in. I hope to heaven it is just a rumor. That soup kitchen is the front line in the good fight. If it goes bad, what will happen to the Stay Sober Society? Not to mention all the charitable institutions that depend on me for soup deliveries. Did you finish the story you interviewed me for? About Carl Sagan? Yes, but those pig-headed editors at the paper rejected it. They said my story was slanted, and that I was glorifying a suspected arsonist. As if their stories aren't always glorifying the criminal vermin that run this town. This whole thing makes me so mad I could spit. Though of course I never would. There's an ordinance against it, and it's so untidy. You make hot soup deliveries? It's one of my many small contributions to the good cause. Healthy bodies, healthy souls. Or so one hopes. I pick up barrels of hot soup at the kitchen, and I deliver them hither and thither. Hill Valley Orphanage, the St. Francis Xavier Ranch for Unwanted Children, Foggy Mountain Home for the Incurably Insane, Shady Acres Rest Home. Oh, I can barely keep track of them all. It's a very big job. Hey, I can help you deliver soup, but I don't need a lot of time to charities. Oh? Which ones? The, um, Mario Brothers. Get. Ah, yes. The Italians do so many good works. What? If you'll just fix it so I can pick up the barrels of soup. Now hold your horses, let's not get over eager. I drive the soup cycle in this town, and I'm not about to turn it over to an upstart. But if you're well connected with the local charitable institutions... Yeah? You can let me know when they're running low on soup. As a matter of fact, I do know a local charity that's running low on soup. Oh? Who? The rest home. Those dear old timers. Soup is one of the few pleasures they have left. All right, Edna, just think of all those poor unfortunates and hold your nose. Mr. Donnelly! I have no idea what the cause of that was. Okay, let's see what Doc has to say. Doc! Your younger self needs 190 proof booze to fuel his rocket drill. Well, that could be a problem. I know, we're both underage. Underage, nothing. It's 1931, and alcohol has been outlawed throughout the country. Are you sure you're about to graduate from high school? I'm kidding, Doc. It was a joke. A joke? If I live to be a hundred, and I almost have, I'll never understand a teenage compunction to make a joke out of everything. What do you know about Edna Strickland? Edna? We never really socialized when I was younger. She was a few years older than me, and we travel in different socio-economic circles. Why do you ask? She thinks you're a hero for burning down that speakeasy. She's doing a story on you. A story? Oh, yes. Now I remember. Ask Edna. The etiquette column that doubled as a pro-temperance soapbox. She believed that the consumption of alcohol would inevitably lead to a complete societal breakdown. Sounds like a fun gal. You should have seen her when the hippies started showing up in the 60s. She just somehow lost her mind. That would explain a lot. What's the story with this kid Tannen jerk anyway? This father? By this time next year, he'll be pulling down a life sentence in San Quentin. There was even a song about it. Wait, if Biff will be born in 1938, and Kid will be in prison... As I recall, he escaped from prison in 1937 for about three hours. That's a busy three hours. No kidding. <laughs> Hang in there, Doc. Not the best choice of words, Marty. Okay. <sighs> as much as I don't want to, I'm going to talk to that one guy. 
I guess we got some hell matches. You, you got kiwi all over my socks. Sorry, boss. Get out of here. How about you? Huh? I'm sitting at a shoe shine booth. You walk up. Either you're here to shine my shoes or you got a death wish. Which is it? Hey, I represent United Charities of Hill Valley. Can you authorize me to pick up soup from your establishment and deliver it to some very deserving souls? Nah, that Strickland dame's got the charity racket pretty much locked up. No point in giving her competition. Edna Strickland thinks your soup kitchen might not be on the up and up. That dame gets on my nerves. Got a great pair of gams, though. I guess you won't talk about your business. Why not? I got nothing to hide. I recently acquired controlling interest in the Sisters of Mercy soup kitchen. Isn't a soup kitchen an odd line of business for a guy like you? I like soup. Plus, I got a heart as big as all outdoors. Uh, buff a little harder. I want to see myself in the toes. I'm looking for a guy named Arthur McFly. He's my, uh, sort of a relative. Well, he's my employee. He's very busy today. Isn't that Arthur McFly's hat you're holding? It was McFly's hat. Now, it's my peanut bowl. <laughs> Can I have some peanuts? Why not? I'm a magnanimous kind of guy. Go ahead, knock yourself out. Hey, kid. Yeah. What the hell is that? <laughs> hey. What'd you do? Lousy crook! Emmy! <laughs> Emmy! Oh, I know what they're gonna do. Hop on the trap! Nobody makes a monkey out of Kid Tannen! Like that. Sandlot football. They used to call me the streak. Get out. Okay, hopefully I got all the stuff I needed. Hmm. Okay, first most. My grandpa may be a little wimpy, but he's got great taste in hats. Oh god, it's a, he's a Team Fortress 2 player! <laughs> okay, let's see if Doc has anything to say about this hat. I don't think that would be interested in Arthur's hat. Psst, Doc! Okay, let's see. Uh. Okay, never mind. Hang in there, Doc. Okay. What if I gave... What's a face a hat? I don't think it's her style. Hey, uh, Miss Strickland. Oh, hello, Mr. Crockett. Try not to draw any undue attention my way. I'm on the trail of a hot new scoop, as we in the newspaper business say. Okay. What's the Stay Sober Society? You haven't heard of the SSS? They do the most marvelous work, taking hopeless drunken bums and turning them into former hopeless drunken bums. I'm one of the founding members. And not to say that I was ever, well, you know. Anyway, we've always met in the cellar of the Sisters of Mercy soup kitchen, but for some reason, the new managers don't want us down there, so we're stuck. We've got nowhere to meet. 
Hmm. I know a place where the Stay Sober Society can meet. Oh? Where? You can meet in the park. No, that's no good. Too many of the members sleep in the park. I got a book. Oh? Where? Okay, once I got an idea. Some of us down at the patent office are wondering, what made you think of a rocket power drill? Ah, that'd be Journey to the Center of the Earth by Jules Verne. It was a revelation. Yeah, that's kind of what we figured. How about Kid Tannen? What do we know about him? He's loud, he's obnoxious, he's not very bright, and he doesn't like anybody getting in his way. Yep, that's a Tannen, all right. You have to deliver a lot of subpoenas. Father's always sending me out to do these dirty jobs. He wants to expose me to different kinds of people. All he's exposed me to is a lot of new curse words. This subpoena's for Arthur McFly? Have you seen him? For a few seconds in the soup kitchen, but I think he's gone back into hiding. Brilliant deduction, Einstein. <laughs> what do you know about Arthur McFly? Certified accountant. Graduated Hill Valley five classes ahead of me. Seems like a nice fellow, actually. How did he get mixed up with a guy like Kid Tannen? Who knows? Sometimes people find themselves stuck in situations they can't get out of. Okay. This might be a stupid question, but couldn't you have designed your rocket-powered drill to run on fuel that, you know, isn't illegal? Illegal? What does law have to do with science? Science has its own laws. You of all people should know that. Have you read The Time Machine? H.G. Wells? Not yet, but it's on my list. Hmm. Well, couldn't you tweak your engine design a little so it runs on something else? Like what? I don't know. Gas, maybe? Gasoline? <laughs> Yesterday's news. You'll see. By 1940, automobiles will all run on pure alcohol. If serving subpoenas is such dirty work, why don't you just say no? Look, what's the worst thing that can happen to me on this job? You could get shot. Yeah, well, believe me, that's nothing compared to what I'll get if I mouth off to my pop. Any okay. idea where we could find Artie? Not a jot. If only we had a way of tracking him. Tracking, that's it! We'll get that subpoena delivered. My name isn't... Sonny Crockett! Yeah. I got it. Okay. Off his hat. Einstein. Hey, honey. Come here for a sec, boy. Hey, boy. Can you find the guy who belongs to this hat? He's going to find peanuts. Where is he going? Only one way to find out. 